So we finished off our first season with USMP. After a pretty terrible start, things turned around quite nicely and finished really strongly to the point where we might have continental football for this coming season but I, I still can't properly confirm it hopefully we'll work it out in today's episode but today we've got our first transfer special which is going to be difficult so strap yourselves in get ready for this one and let's see who we can bring in to the club Hello and welcome back to Vamos to the Top. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode where, of course, we are doing the transfer special. Now, first of all, an apology for the lack of content over the past few days. It's been a really bizarre past few days or so. Um, I don't, I can't quite explain it. Yesterday's video was meant to come out on Saturday, but I was so busy on Saturday doing the Lincoln City game commentary and then doing the streamer showdown that I didn't have time to edit it. It was meant to come out on Sunday. It was uploaded on Sunday, but I then forgot to actually you know, schedule it as a public video, essentially, which is poor on my part, to be fair, and uh, didn't think about it again until Tuesday, and I thought, oh my god, I've not done it. So that's why that one was late. But it's been a very slow start to the week for me, because I was out on Sunday night with my friends, and uh, it's, it's one of those rare nights where I literally have no idea what's happened. I can't remember a single thing about it. My phone is smashed to pieces, don't know how. Uh, that's off for repair somewhere now, which is going to be not nice to have to pay for. So really, it's at the start of this week just feeling quite sorry for myself, really. Um, so anyway, we're getting back into a routine now. It's all self-inflicted, this. And uh, hopefully now we're going to just settle back into the USMP and the Vamos to the Top routine. So let's start off today's episode by assessing the league to start off with. So we are now at the end of the season. I believe all the games have been played. And I think we can maybe actually explain how the league works a little bit better now. So at the start of the season, the league is split into two different leagues, Group A and Group B. We were in Group B and we came bottom of it. Now, the winners of both these groups go into a playoff match, I believe, if I can then find the playoff matches. Yeah, there we go, the final. There it is. And that's between Sporting Crystal and Ayacucho, which Sporting Crystal won 3-0. The winner of that playoff is then put into the Champions playoff at the end of the season. Following that, we then have a 17-game season where everyone played against each other once. And we actually came third in this, which was pretty decent going. But essentially, this doesn't actually matter that much. The winner of this, again, goes straight through into the playoff system at the end of the season. Then, of course, we have the overall league table, which is running in parallel to both of the other leagues that are going on separately or weird. I don't... It's so complicated. Either way, this is the overall league table from across the season, and the top four go into that playoff place at the end of the season. However, because Sporting Crystal already had a place in it from earlier on in the season... They got it anyway. Ayacucho came second, so they got it. But Deportes won the overall league table and the other league table. So only three teams went into it. Cusco, I'm not quite sure why they didn't get it, but they didn't get it. Even though if we look at the rules and we look at the overall league table, one, two, three, four teams go into the Champions playoff. But then when we actually look at the Champions playoff that has happened off camera since you guys were last year... There was only one semi-final between Ayacucho and Sporting Crystal, and then only one final between Sporting Crystal, who beat Ayacucho, and then Deportes, who won the overall league table, and Deportes won it 2-1, which I assume means they won the overall league thing, and it does say up here they have won the 2021 league, ti league title. So I think that's all done and dusted. There was also a relegation playoff, which Sport Boys won, so they stay in the top flight. Now, going back to the overall league table, which again is rather complicated, we came 8th, which is very exciting. Now, if we look at the rules and we look at the overall league table, 8th place gets Copper Total Sudamericana first round qualification, depending on the winner of the Copper Bicentario, which is the cup that is played in Peru. And that cup, if we can find it, yep, here it is, was won by Deportes, who obviously won the league title. They go into the Copa uh, Libertadores. So on the ground that we came eighth in this table and Deportes, who came first, won the cup final, this assumes that we are going to have Copa Sudamericana this season. But I'll be honest, none of this seems to make sense to me right now, and it's very complicated, so I, I really don't know. But we did want to start off today's video by trying to explain a little bit of the league table um, 
but if anyone can understand it better than I can, I'd love to know, because I really think I may have got it wrong. Anyway, moving swiftly on to the team, this is what I think we need to be doing this transfer window, and primarily it is increasing and improving our backline. We need some better players in there. I think we realised that the 4-4-2 was working very well for us. Uh, Oliver and Veron made a pretty decent scoring partnership. I'm happy for those guys to stay this season. Oliver is staying on loan once again, because we did explain that because of the way this save file is set up, we're using the most recent update in Football Manager, which is February 2022. However, this save file starts in February 2021. But because we're using the update, the players are essentially the players for the 2022 season in real life. So rather than all having one year contracts at the start of a save file, which they would do if we started in 2022, they've all got two year contracts because we started in 2021. And because of that, it means that all our loan players are here for two years and all our current players are here for two years. And actually, it's the same thing for every other team in our division, which makes this transfer window very difficult. So to explain this very quickly, Oliver is here for this season once again on loan. If he's here, we may as well utilise him. Actually played very well across the season when we did play him. Nine goals in uh, 12 starts and eight substitute appearances. A goal every other game nearly. Similar sort of ratio for Veron in the advanced four position, 11 goals in 22 starts, not bad going. And then obviously Gonzalez Vigil got seven goals across 24 games, so I'm pretty happy with our strike force with Brian also in there. Didn't play many games, but is a decent, capable backup for us as well. However, he is, of course, Brazilian, and we're only allowed five foreign players in our team. So he may end up having to go if we find better players than him. Why is Peru so complicated? All oh, right, this is just getting to me already. Once we get past this season and this next transfer window, things will be a lot more simple for us, I reckon. The midfield, I think, can pretty much stay. Uh, Sandoval ended up being our best player this past season on the right wing, and Puero was very good on the left-hand side as well, although maybe we could upgrade him just a little bit. Uh, Tuesta is arguably the best player in the team. He's got to stay and play games for us. And then I also do want to, uh, to promote the young 19-year-old Gabriel Delgado to play a little bit more this season instead of Moyano, who we've got in on loan. We also have Gonzalo is still on loan this season and given that we have him on loan and he is pretty decent probably our best defender we are going to try and utilize him however we could do with someone better alongside him now that's not to say that Marcos Delgado is not bad Marcos Delgado very decent and if we can't find anyone he's very capable of playing but at 33 years old is on the decline the wing back rolls that's definitely an area we could improve on now Josu Rodriguez is a pretty decent left back however I do think we could do better so I think our primary focus is looking for a new back line now part of the issue that we were not really good at keeping clean sheets last season is because our midfield don't provide a whole lot of cover for our back line and I think maybe what we need to be doing is potentially dropping our line of engagement just a little bit and that way what we can do is just try and compress things a little bit and hope that it kind of helps out the midfield just a little bit. Otherwise, we could look to change Delgado to a box-to-boxer potentially. That might just help things out a little bit as well. But given that things are working very well for us and we win a lot of games, I'm reluctant to make too many wholesale changes, at least this season. Obviously, that leads us into buying players in today's episode. And the board have given us £27,000 a week in wages and £71,000 to spend in transfer budget, which really isn't that much. Now, the current squad screen I've got sorted by potential ability because there are some players that we've not put into the bench or the first team for next season that I do want to keep hold of. Players like Casasola with five star potential, uh, Brian Rios with four and a half stars of potential, Melgar, Young, four and a half stars of potential and some four star potential players there. I think they could be very decent. It's the players down here that haven't got great potential or great current ability that I think we need to be trying to sell. So these guys are the players that I think we need to be getting gone at some point. Unless, of course, we just cannot find players who are better. There's quite a few left-backs and right-backs here who want to leave the club, but if we can't find better players than them, hmm, they might have to stay. But I am going to start off today's episode by offering them out to clubs. And actually, quite nicely, there are some teams that are interested. We'll get rid of the one that wants us to pay wages and we'll accept the 12 thousand pounds for Jack Safra. Now none of these transfers are going to be massive money obviously but it is going to try and save a little bit in the wage budget for us but Safra the only player that has actually had bids made for him that's probably because the transfer window doesn't actually properly open until January the 4th so maybe we try again then. Now as I say because contracts across the board are not expiring until next year it's going to be very difficult to sign Peruvian players in particular for this coming transfer window because we can't sign them on free essentially we've got to be buying players and I've been asking 
these players' agents if they'd be interested in signing for us, because these are some guys that I have scouted out and thought, right, you'll do a job for us at least, I'm pretty sure, next season. The issue is, whilst they are interested in joining us, the transfer fee is expensive. And that's something that I'm not too keen on. But I think my favourite player from this list is Carlos Cabello, who is a 24-year-old Peruvian player currently on loan from Sporting Crystal to Club Deportivo Universidad Vallejo. Um, they've done pretty well this season. Uh, he's a good player for this division. Has potential to be a leading player, but I'm not sure if he'll get there or not. But did have a very good season with a 7.22 average rating. One of the better players this season with uh, some pretty decent underlying stats as well. And the attributes on him don't look too bad as well. The issue is £18,000 to £190,000 is quite a big range and we're not going to be able to afford it if it gets anywhere above £70,000. Now the current financials are looking like this, just over half a million pounds in the bank balance. We can't really do much with the budget, like if we go to ask for more budget they're saying no because they've just given it to us, if we can even find uh, increase transfer budget right they'll get back to a shut but they'll say no so we've got to be very clever with how we bid for some players here and i want to start off with carlos cabello and we'll see how things go so if we put 15 on the line right now and then we've got to add in some installments so if we say that the next three years we'll pay you another twenty-five thousand pounds that's forty thousand pounds in total which feels like a low ball offer to be fair. What do they come back with? They want 36 now and 64 down the line. Well, that's getting very expensive very quickly. So if we drop that to 20 and up that to 80, it's a hundred, in fact, let's not even do that. 20 and 50 for 70. And then we add in some things like after international appearances, after five international games, we'll give you another 50 grand. I don't think he's gonna get five international appearances. I hope he doesn't at this stage, but that's an offer which they can accept. Okay, this is how we're gonna get somewhere. So he would be a fantastic right back coming into the team. If we don't get him, we do have the option of uh, Franco Medina, who's a little bit younger, a little bit more potential, some very good pace and a very nice smile as well, but is more expensive in the first place and I'd rather not have to go for him. If we want the left back situation then Christian Cabral is the man that I think we need to bring through. Currently playing for Sporting Crystal, he did very well this past season but wasn't a big part of their first team and this is why I think we could probably prize him away. The issue is his agent has come back and say £45,000 up to half a million and that's something that we would not be able to afford at all. Has no caps for Peru and um, potentially could get some in the future maybe but again we need to go in with a low ball offer of, call it £20,000 or so, add some instalments of, you know, another 50 or something like that, 70, and then we go into, in fact, let's just suggest that to start off with, shall we? And pff, they want a ton of money. They want so much, £300,000 for this guy, which makes you think it's just not going to be possible at all. If we go twenty five fifty, and then for 10 international appearances will give you 150 grand. <laughs> 225,000 pounds, suggest. And they just want more, they've put up to 425,000 pounds. Okay, this one might be off the table. One player that I do really wanna bring into the team though is Alec, and I can't pronounce his surname, but, now I can't remember what save we had him in, but we've had this guy before in saves. And I feel like it could have been a Lincoln Loco, maybe, potentially. But I do know that he does get quite good. I'm just, I swear he does. So, I am interested in signing him, but not for £140,000. So again, we are going to have to lowball this quite a bit. Like 25, add instalments of, you know, another 75 for £100,000. What do they say? They actually aren't too far off. 68... 145, well again, if we drop it down to, let's say 30, and then we go for 100, no, not even that, 70. And then we say, we'll give you 100 after, if I can find international appearance, after 10 international appearances, we'll give you 100. And suggest that, and they've locked in 61, okay, they've locked it in which we can't quite afford right now. 
cancel. Okay, well, things aren't starting off brilliantly. Um, let's just put it like that. Things are not starting off brilliantly, but there are more players being scouted out right now as we speak, so it's fine. Uh, Sporting Crystals' Carlos Caballero is wanting £1,000 a week to £1.6 grand a week as an important player, which I'm happy to give him as, and wants to play as a fullback, which is exactly what we have been playing this past season. Fullbacks, excellent work. So happy to leave that promise on there. If we make him a regular starter, he's happy with that, and that doesn't quite drop wage as much as I want it to. 1.1 grand a week. Give the agent kind of what he wants. Release fee clause, that'll be fine. We'll leave it as that, just to get him to sign a contract, essentially. Appearance fee's got to come down. Clean sheet's got to come down. We'll get rid of a new substitute fee. And he's not too happy. 1.2. Let's try that, shall we? Oh, we can get him. 1.2. We've got him. Okay, good. And that's quite nice, because I do think he is an improvement on Cordova, our current 30-year-old right back. I mean, already, from what we know on the comparisons, he's a better player. We just might need to be a lot more patient with other players and other scout reports coming through. I mean, another centre-back here who can play left-back. Oh, and has got a left foot too. And this is what suddenly looks quite valuable to me. 14 tackling, 14 marking, 12 heading, 6 foot, 12 jumping reach, pace 30. I mean, it's not it's not that bad, you know. It's currently playing for Ayacucho and played a big part this past season in their great run. I see enough here for him to be a left-sided centre-back for us. Let's put 20k down like that. Let's add an instalment of... 60k and just see what they say and they're not far off you know if we go back to the 20 and the 60 and then we go after five international appearances which i don't think he's ever going to get and we say another 50 well let's put the 70 for 150 grand right because I, I think they'll accept that yeah they do oh no 39, 170. I will tentatively accept it on the grounds that we are not finding many good left-footed centre-backs. And this guy, who has played in a team that has nearly won the title this season, um, he could be quite important. Now, another area that I am looking at, actually, uh, quite intently at the moment, is the, if I can find the actual tactic screen, is left midfielder and right midfielder. We have got the backup spots available and open for those guys. Obviously, we have options there, but I'd love to improve it. And a few reports are coming through now for left-sided wingers. And this guy, currently at uh, Juan Cayo, is actually looking quite good. I mean, ignore the mentals. They're not very good at all. But the, the fundamental technicals and physicals are actually really solid. Again, though, it's going to be a, a pricey one, isn't it? We have to go down to, like, I don't know, 15 grand here? potentially and then add over three years another 75 for 90 in total suggest and they've gone up a little bit but not by a huge amount if we can get back down to 15 and bring that down to 85 for a hundred thousand pounds total they just want a little bit more don't they in fact they went down they went less didn't they they want more up front 17.5 and 80k no, no, I want... They're slowly bringing it down somehow. We'll accept that demand, I think. And I feel like that's actually a good deal because the other players that are coming through scout report-wise uh, are not that great. Daniel Chevez as a striker, um, we don't need, so we could ignore him for now. Okay, so some contracts coming back in. So, Francisco, the left side centre-back, uh, he wants a big contract. A really big contract. A contract that's going to make him the highest earner at the club. I'm not sure how I feel about that at all. In terms of Morelos, though, the left winger, he wants a contract, which actually is pretty reasonable, I think, given how good he probably would be in our team. Regular starter, that's fine. And he wants 1.6. We can bring this down to about the one grand mark, I'm sure. Given some money after... We increase that as well to 10 assists if he gets that. Bring that down to two. It's a very similar contract to the play we looked at before, isn't it? Increase the agent fee. He just wants more money. If we can get him down to that one grand a week... Or 1.1. 1.2. 1 
1.2 seems reasonable. I am not happy though with this centre back. I think it's it's one too expensive up top, and I think it's too too expensive. In, in yeah, we're not paying him this much money. We we literally can't afford to right now when we have to bring in other players as well. We can come back to him later on, and I will um, if I can report lists which one I want to M move to shortlist transfer target six month. There we go. Ah, also, there was another leg to play in the promotion relegation playoff, which Sport Boys have drawn 0-0, but they've won it on aggregate by four points to one point. Another twist in the whole weird league system. How that, I don't know what that even means. Ah, and now that that relegation playoff is finished, uh, we have now got on holiday, which is great. You love to see it, as uh, Sandoval comes third in the league's young player of the season. Fantastic stuff. And is also in team of the season. That's amazing. Congratulations, Sandoval. The board actually come back and said no about the increase to the transfer budget, which we knew was going to happen anyway. I just did it as a formality to show you guys this on, on camera. As we've got a scout signing a new contract, which is good, and Safra leaving the club for 12 grand, we're going to have 4.2 added to the transfer budget, which is actually a nice little addition. Oh, and immediately, Carlos Caballero is set to sign for the club for... Um, how much is up front? Twenty and a half thousand pounds up front. So this is a big improvement at right back for us, um, and this is, I think, going to be a really nice addition to the team. Has played a big part in a team that did very well this season. Fan of this, so I presume he will join the club on the fourth of uh, January. Is that what it says? Yeah, fourth of January is when he's going to join, and I presume the same with Daniel Morales, the left winger, who looks really good to me with the crossing and dribbling, which is much higher than we have already. I love it. Also, we're going to hit with a tax bill of £24,000 this season. What? I didn't really make profit, which is pretty impressive, to be fair. Uh, we have just signed a individual TV deal for £1.7 million over five years. Seven years, I should say. Sorry. So, how is this? The finance have been improved a bit, to be fair. Um, but certainly, that's, that's a nice sponsor, isn't it? Individual TV deal worth, oh, £1.5 million per year. Oh, Total value 10.5. I mean, it'd be a bit annoying when we become like a Copa Libertadores team earning tons of money and, and that's all we're going to get. But it's it's nice. Now, what this does also mean is that Ampuero could probably move to be the left back again. Like he was always meant to be left back. But when we switched this 4-4-2, he was the best left midfielder that we had. So actually what this might mean is that Ampuero moves here into the left back spot and then may have to be backed up by Jose Rodriguez. In fact, will be backed up by Jose Rodriguez. And then in the left midfield, maybe we look for someone young there. But we do have players like Gamara, who... Uh, oh, can't play there. Okay. Joseph Vega. Uh, can't play there. Okay, well, not many players can play there. But uh, we will have... I've got, and of course, if you know there are injuries, then Ampuero can... I think we'd be okay on this left-hand side, actually. I think we're okay. We've got the right back coming in as well. So it's kind of just a left centre back and maybe a couple other backup players that we could bring in. So let's do this a different way then, shall we? Let's actually look through some like proper data to see if we can find someone. So ideally Peruvian, that's what we want. Uh, and someone who's at least six foot tall as well. That's what we want to be seeing. Uh, if we could get an average rating of above a seven, that would be lovely as well. But they need to have done it in at least, I say 20. And that brings us back 18 players here. Okay, and then we've got all of these things to look through, but we need to be looking at things like tackles per game, uh, tackles completed ratio. That would be quite good, wouldn't it? And apparently, this guy, who is available on a free, has completed 100% of his tackles across 32 appearances. Although you don't look very good in terms of anything else here. Um, which is a concern. What about the 21-year-old underneath him on an amateur contract? Six foot four, though. And this is where this lets me down a little bit. Because, yes, they've got great stats. But then you actually try to look at the attributes and it... They're getting these great stats from the amateur leagues. I mean, can we just offer them trials right now? Transfer offer trial for four weeks and just, just see how good they are. I don't know how much I'm feeling any of them, if I'm honest with you. Um, I love the fact that Marcos Delgado, where is he down here, has got the left foot. And this past season, a 7.12 average rating, maybe we've been a bit harsh on him. 
I think maybe we are. Unless we, until we can find someone who properly wipes the floor with him in terms of attributes, then I don't really feel the need to replace him. Like Francisco, who wanted two and a half grand a week, what he wanted, is, you could argue, the better player. Um, even though in the air, slightly worse, technically slightly worse, vision slightly worse, I think the important stuff which we'd need at centre-back this season, more physicality, speed, um, and things like that, I think maybe he'd be the better player. So again, I think maybe he's the one we sort of hold out for on the information that we have right now. But of course, we have just been limiting ourselves to Peruvian players right now. Uh, if we cast the net further afield, we might get other results. If I start looking at any old centre-back who's expiring in their contract soon, uh, this guy, Roman Cordoba, comes up as a right-footed centre-back, but would be available on a free. And if we compare him with Marcos Delgado, we're seeing a very similar player, albeit we don't know everything about him just yet. So maybe a bit more scouting on this front is needed, particularly if I just go to add in uh, general and I go to uh, left foot and I say at least strong. Although just have come across Jackson, who is a 32-year-old centre-back who's actually looking quite good. Available on a free as well. Would want to join us as a star player. How about important player? And immediately wants four grand a week, so no. There's a lot holding us back. A lot holding us back at the moment. And I think the, the biggest thing, obviously, is the contracts, that everyone's got an extra year on their contract, essentially. That's the biggest thing holding us back and why we can't make as many signings as we want to this season. Ah, Marcus Delgado as well has won the League One signing of the season. Mean, we've been too harsh on Marcus Delgado. He stays in the team. He's just won signing of the season, and I'm thinking about replacing him. No. He stays. Also, all the new league stuff is coming about right now. So are we going to find out about this Copa Sudamericana thing? Because we've still not been given any, any confirmation about that. Like, all I've got is that we came eighth and the rule said if you come eighth, you might get it, depending on the winner of the cup. And the winner of the cup got Libertadores football. So I think we should have Sudamericana football this season. But I really don't know. I mean, we're being told to follow the Sudamericana but we're also being told to follow the Brazilian top flight. So who knows what that means? But as we tick over into the next season, what are we gonna learn? What are we gonna learn here? Not much uh, by looks of things, not much at all. Nothing in the schedule either, okay. Draw date, 12th of January, but that's for this past season, the Copa Sudamericana. I believe we'd go into the preliminary first round. I think that's what we go into. Also, 1.5 million for TV rights. I presume that's what the individual TV deal that we saw earlier is, I presume. But I don't think that's extra. No, look at the bank balance, it's not extra. What a shame that is. That would have been really, really good if that was the case, to be fair. So we've hit the 4th of January right now, which should mean that the transfer window is open and uh, Morelis has joined the club. you love to see it. He's the... Where's the other guy? Wait, joins 4th of January 2023? How has that happened? Surely that was... Oh, is this because he has another year on his loan deal with Vallejo? And, oh, for goodness sake. Right, well... <laughs> oh. At least there's one signing in the team, isn't there? Uh, welcome in, Morelis. Welcome in there. With your very good pace, your very good crossing, your very good dribbling, exactly what we need. Well, suddenly, uh, Cordova and Obeso might be needed at the club a little bit longer. Uh, I'll try and sell the other players, though. And, of course, uh, no one wants them in the slightest. Thanks a lot. Uh, there is a £12,000 bid for Vega, though, who is a player that we uh, we don't really want anymore. Um, happy to let him go. So we'll accept that one. I mean, there are a lot of players with expired contracts uh, just... Not many that we'd really... Why well, I say that? Who are you? Dimas Morelas. Who's a left back. I mean, let's try and get a few of these guys on loan, shall we? On, on trial, I should say, sorry. I mean, there are quite a few players who we could get on trial uh, and just see how they go. If we could sort it primarily by right backs, uh, who got none of them are scouted out, but we'll transfer uh, off a trial for four weeks. We'll do the same with centre-backs as well, why not? Although there's 116 of them, so uh, maybe just the ones that we have got scared. I mean, this guy, 20 years old, left foot, five-star potential. Who, who wants him? Who's wanting him? Quite a few clubs, right. We, we, need to, we need to get this guy quick, I've decided. All of a sudden, uh, centre-back, yep, that's fine. Strength in midfield, I'm going to 
say no, but important player, yes. No, oh, three grand a week. Right, how good are you? Potentially quite good. Like, if that pace is up towards 18, if that marking is up towards 17, if that tackling is 14, he could be quite good, you know. Has just been let go from Argentinos Juniors. Do we YOLO it? And just give him the contract that he wants. I'd rather not. If we can drop it down to two grand a week, he'd still be the highest earner at the club, but I'm, I'm panicking a bit now. Has locked in length and release fee clauses. That's fine. Um, get rid of that. Drop that down to 500, 400. Get rid of that. He won't like any of this. He Not really at all. Uh, let's go back to two grand. 500, 400. 2.2. He's happy. I can't. What have I just done? I'll also get some right midfielders in on trial as well. Uh, transfer off a trial for uh, four weeks. And here they are. The army of trialists have arrived at the club. Maybe there'll be someone good in here. Ho hopefully at right back. But I mean, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm judging it based on the stars here, but there's, there's no one here who looks f phenomenal. What about players who are listed for loan? I think we should be able to get someone. I think we can get one loan player in, maybe. Uh, although we've not got any good scout reports on them available, okay. Also, other clubs want Gabriel Delgado on loan and then I think to buy him down the line, we're gonna reject all of these because he's a bit of a future on midfield. Uh, Ayacucho want Vega, we'll accept that one because we want him gone. Ah, and that young 20-year-old centre-back has gone to Sporting Crystal instead, so not coming to us. Ah, I think we I think we are in the Copa Sudamericana. The preliminary round draw is done today. And we're in it. We're in, there's a lot of teams in this, uh, so I'll just quickly, you know, keep pressing draw for ages. But are we going to be... We, we are in this. We actually are in this. And we're, pl we're playing it to team from Peru as well. I mean, after all of that, we're not even playing anyone else from another country. But we are playing a team from Peru. And a team that I think we, we know we can beat in Universidad Cesar Vallejo. And I'm sure, I'm sure we've beaten them before. And that's on the 9th of March. That's actually quite a while away. But past meetings with them, we won 1-0 last season. And so is it just a one-legged affair or a two-legged affair? Uh, it, will it tell me? Just the one-legged affair? No, wait, up here. It's a two-legged affair. Two-legged affair. And also we play them on the first day of the season as well. So three games in the space of a week against this team. Okay, so, I mean, I, I didn't realise we qualified for it, but we did. And there was no sort of fanfare made about it. We, we are just there. Amazing. Also, Melisi is wanted by uh, another club. I think we'll try and push this up a little bit to more like the £15,000 mark. Suggest, and they say, yes, we'll accept that. Brill and he'll be gone too. I'm also seeing this Jonathan Gonzalez guy. Now, he's a guy from Uruguay who's got four caps for their under-20s, who's a right-back, centre-back, and left-back. He wants a very small contract. And I tell you what, it might be worth a punt on him. We have got a space for an international player. As a breakthrough prospect, it might be worth a punt on him for a season until we actually get our actual right back coming in, just to see how well he performs. Also, Melisi is set to leave the club as well for 15 grand. We're going to get five grand of that, which is great. And then Ayacucho are signing up Vega for 15 grand as well. So we're making some profit. We're making some money, which is quite nice. I mean, so far we've actually spent more on Morelos, um, but this is over the, you know, a long time, hopefully. Mate, he's, he's a good player. Guarantee you he'll get 15 assists this season. I, I really hope now I've spent the money on him. I really hope. We've also got the option of selling Carlo Morelos, who is a 18-year-old fullback with four-star potential. I don't see anything there that suggests he's going to be amazing in the future. Crossing's low, marking's low, passing's low, tackling's high at 13, but that's the only sort of standout. If we can push this up to like 30 grand, what do they say? Oh, they just can't. <laughs> For goodness sake. At least Jonathan Gonzalez is set to join the club. Uh, he will be kind of like a temporary right back potentially because he's not very good going forwards. But I'm seeing a guy with 14 tackling, which is very good, marking a little bit low. 
Okay, he's actually kind of crap. Um, look, fundamentals are there. Fundament he's probably our second best, I would say, behind... Yeah, because Cordova will, will probably end up starting still. Gonzalez plays centre-back, so this other Gonzalez will probably be a good backup. It also means we can probably try and offload Obeso as well, um, which would be quite handy because he's on a much bigger contract, I believe. He is at double the contract, nearly, of the, the guy we've just brought in. And he's old. Offer to clubs, let's just get him out, I don't know, 10 grand, something like that. And there we go, a 10 grand offer on the table for him, accept it. Uh, another bit for that young right back, Carlo Morella. So I am happy to let leave the club. Um, 30k was too much, wasn't it? So let's go 23 and a half, which is accepted. Okay, that's good. Also, a best so leaving for 10 grand as well. That's a good player out of the club, saves money on wages too. And he is now leaving the club as well for £23,500. So again, more money coming into the club. I feel like we've done quite a good job actually of selling players, making some money, generating some profit here. What we haven't done a good job with, though, is signing players. We did know that was going to be very, very difficult, uh, and we did know that that was going to be a big issue. Now, we can also get uh, Gonzalez into the team, and he becomes our fifth and final foreign player. If we get more in, we'll have to start unregistering some, starting probably with Brian up front. Anyway, uh, we are approaching the start of the pre-season, essentially, but we're also approaching the time where it's going to get too late for me to be recording because people are asleep in my house. So I think we are going to call time on today's transfer special here, which has been a little bit lackluster, I do know, but that's mostly, I would say, down to contracts not expiring, essentially, and we've been very, very stuck. So I do think we have strength in this team. I think this team has improved quite nicely, with the additions that we've made, just albeit one of them is arriving next year. But I also think we can take solace in that we have moved on from Deadwood, we've made some money for the club, and we have a team that we know is good because we had a phenomenal second half of last season. Repeat that again, and we could be in a top four position this coming season. So I do think things are looking quite good for us. I do think things are looking pretty nice. But also these players have just been released from clubs in our division, so I will <laughs> very quickly now of the few players that are being released, I will transfer, offer for a trial, and see how good they are. Either way, thank you very much for watching today. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, drop down a like on the video for me, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a lovely evening. Speak to you all soon. Goodbye.